Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Kayang magibiyo, kaya sa sikatanan, alam ng puso, sa titig mo'y buhay. Lupang pinitang, kaya ka ng magibig, sa man tulungin, di ka masisigil sa nagatang. Sa sikoy at sa namin, kaya ang mga 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 mga
Okay, good morning everyone. Happy Saturday. We're back to our Saturday schedule webinar and this is an extraordinary a day for we are celebrating the National Women's Month. So for all the women out there who are uh, watching right now, happy Women's Month. Okay, and the 2021 National Month celebration serves as a tribute, a platform, and a call to action that highlights the extraordinary roles of every girls in the society as trailblazers and harbingers of change. In line with this uh, celebration for today's re webinar, we'll be talking about encouraging girls in STEM, girl power. Okay, with full house, a uh, young STEM enthusiasts and influencers. Okay, to begin with, let me introduce our president and CEO. A round of applause to Miss Maylene Abiba. Hello, good morning, everyone, and happy Saturday. Happy National Women's Month to everyone. And we're so excited because we have a powerhouse uh, guest of all girls and young women today, this morning. Thank you, Adeline, for your introduction. Now, women and girls should have equal access to education in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and including arts. If we deny women and girls the chance to realize their potential, we deprive the world of the ingenuity and innovation of half the population. Now, I want to put this cause of women and girls in STEM, or in science and technology and innovation, in perspective. Full and equal access to participation and leadership of women in science, in technology, and innovation for women and girls of all ages has been recognized as an imperative for achieving gender equality and the empowerment of women and girls. Equally, women's and girls' STEM participation is seen as a key contributor to filling the larger STEM human resource deficit. Now, gaps remain wide and persistent in science, technology, engineering, and math fields at graduate, postgraduate, doctorate levels, or even as well as professional scientists, engineers, and mathematicians, STEM teachers, researchers, and inventors. So this is not only happening in developing countries, but also in developed countries as well. So now, I'd like to share that there is not enough women in STEM as role models. It is a vicious cycle of there not being enough women in STEM as role models to inspire and embolden others to join. Finish education and training and to rise in STEM careers, to be visible leaders and award winners and not just hidden figures. As it is often said that the problem of not enough women in STEM is there is not enough women in STEM. So what do we need to do to create and foster an ecosystem that nourishes the interest, talent, and intellectual capital of girls and women in STEM education, training, and careers to address these structural barriers and gaps? The first step is to have the first step is to have gender as gender data, knowledge, advocacy, and movement building to demolish the myth of female incapacity and inferiority in STEM, to build and sustain girls' and women's interest in, in and confidence about their inner spark to take on the challenge of STEM education and careers, to inculcate a STEM culture in a gender-neutral way, but with special appeal to women and girls from early childhood to adulthood, from homes, schools, universities, and labs to tech ventures. So making it cool and making it second nature for women to embrace as a hobby, as a passion, as an academic pursuit, as a profession, to be a profitable enterprise. Recognition and awards from the start energizes the female STEM flocks. So to train and develop skills in incubators is what we do, research and data labs, and rebooting through the life and career cycles. We also need to educate and organize access to and encourage for girls and women to go to STEM and also to stream through special measures and incentives and scholarships is critical. So fostering STEM's women's organization and professional bodies will generate a positive momentum. 
and also for all the women in STEM to mentor. It's important that both women and men STEM leaders mentor girls and women in all stages in their path to participate in leadership in STEM education and careers. So as we celebrate the National Women's Month, women's empowerment through STEM is a vital enabler. STEM gender parity would contribute to greater capital, equality, empowerment, and enable women to be part and to part of and benefit from the technology-driven jobs revolution and underway in the fourth industrial revolution, and then no, no, not leaving anyone behind. So in behalf of Felta Multimedia Incorporated and I Create Cafe Manila, I'd like to greet everyone a happy National Women's Month, girl power, and more power to all. Thank you. Annelin, you're okay. We cannot hear you. Oh, I'm sorry for that. Uh, what I'm saying is thank you so much, Ms. Maylin Davida, for that wonderful information. And yes, we need to encourage more girls uh, on STEM. And it's a girl power and we can do that. Okay, so thank you so much, Ms. Maylin Davida, for that opening remarks. Uh, in line with that, um, of course, we need to encourage women in STEM. Uh, and uh, in line with that, let me show you uh, an EBP video. Uh, we're in. We'll be showing you how girls do in STEM and how they uh, excel on that program. Okay, so.
All right. So what a wonderful presentation. This video shows how girls uh, excel in STEM and how they can uh, add a program uh, that will help a STEM uh, program, especially with our uh, younger kids who are watching us right now. And for us to uh, encourage uh, small young girls out there to to be encouraged into STEAM, okay? I'll be um I'll be um uh, showing you and I'll be presenting our uh, first uh, speaker for uh, today. She is only uh, ten years old. She is a grade five student, and at her age, uh, she already become uh, the Minecraft uh, education. Edition Ambassador of Felta Multimedia Incorporated, for she is uh, providing uh, trainings and workshop with her friends, uh, with her classmate, and with the community uh, through uh, uh, through uh, sharing her knowledge about Minecraft Education Edition. Let me introduce our first speaker. A round of applause for Sophia Celine Aban. Felta Multimedia Minecraft Education. Minecraft Education Edition. Hi everyone. I'm Sophia Hi everyone, I'm Sophia Celine, Delta Multimedia's Minecraft Education Edition Ambassador. Happy Women's Month to all the girls out there watching. It is my pleasure to become part of this webinar aiming to encourage girl in STEM. As a Minecraft Education Edition Ambassador, I will be sharing one of the tools that we can use in order for us to promote STEM. So are you familiar with Minecraft? First of all, all I know, most especially kids like me, are already familiar with Minecraft game, wherein you can build stuff and do random challenges with your friends. But did you know that there is an actual version of Minecraft? Before I start, let me show you a short video about Minecraft Education Edition. We gave you a world. A world where you could simply create a block and destroy it. A world where the only limit is your imagination. And you taught yourselves how to build funny, creative, bombastic, epic, unexpected, and amazing things. And you took it even further into the world of education. So the question is, can Minecraft help us to understand mathematics, history, how to communicate, collaborate to solve problems, and much, much more? You've shown us it can. The first steps have been taken, and now we invite you to show us how Minecraft inspires you to change the way. Minecraft Education Edition. It is a game-based learning platform that promotes creativity, collaboration, and problem solving in an immersive digital environment. Within Minecraft Education Edition, you can experience immersive learning classroom, friendly futures, creativity, and innovation. With this, I can say that Minecraft is a child-friendly computer game that combines exploration and survival skills. It tests children's imagination and creativity. In simple terms, it's like a digital Lego. You can create anything from a small hut to a huge, sprawling metropolis monster and other challenges characters it became really really interesting the player has to quickly learn how to survive and adapt in for those so the question is what can 
can you do in Minecraft Education Edition? First is, in Minecraft Education Edition, there is actually a cool feature where you and your classmates can work together and collaborate with each other using a single world, even if you're far away from each other, which we all, which we call the joint world. As you can, as you can see on the picture on the screen, there are many characters together that represent the kids using Minecraft Education Edition. Another feature of Minecraft Education Edition that I really enjoyed a lot are the cameras, portfolio, and the book in wheel, where you actually save pictures within the world and documents your experience on a certain challenges. And the lesson that you can save as PDF file and send it to your teacher as your project. This is so cool. Next up is First, for this one, I know everyone will love this, especially those who are really playing Minecraft game in educational version. We can still choose our skins and personalize our game. If you're really just playing a game, but the truth is there is but there are lots of things that we can learn from it. So for those who are new to Minecraft, there's actually no need to, for you to be to be scared of trying since there is what we call an NPC, which means non-player character that will communicate and help you with instruction along your journey. If you're not into reading stuff like this, it has an immersive reader feature where you can simply listen to it. So, play in a secure community. You can actually securely log into your MEE for MEE means Minecraft Education Edition, it's just short. Your Minecraft Education Edition account, because it's under your school office 365 account. So if you have a 365 account, then you enjoy Minecraft Education Edition. As helpful guides for information, include all digital resources. I I'm going to show you the things that you can do with Education Edition. Within my previous video tutorial, I already shared of what are the what are the necessary skills that you need to learn able to play Minecraft Education Edition. For the demonstration, I will be show you one of the educational activity that you can learn from this tool. Chemistry. Okay. is totally awesome. You will learn a lot of things here. Just wait for a moment. Okay. For a moment. Okay, here we are. Let me just go back so I can show you how are you gonna do it. It's a little bit loading, but shout out to my family that is watching, most especially my sister named Allison. Okay, it's loading resources done. So right here. Minecraft Education Edition. Smile for the camera. Here we can pick our characters. Team up skin pack. These are Alex's. You have your team up skin pack where you can pick. I like this girl because she has long hair like me. The developer, developer skin pack. You have here like you're an astronaut, a fireman police, a soldier, a teacher, a scientist, story mode skin pack, redstone specialist skin pack, biome settler skin pack, 
Journey the West skin pack, Halloween costumes. There is really a lot of things you can choose here, but I really like this one. Okay, after, after you're done choosing your skin, you have your play, hour of code, settings, and you can also switch accounts. But for now, we're going to be clicking play. To view my worlds, you will see there the worlds that you've been in. See, those are the worlds that I've been in. You can create your own world, so you can have a journey with your Minecraft agent. You can join a server where you're with your friends. You can import it. Okay, so now let's go to view library, where we have a lot of things. Okay, science, mathematics, computer science, languages and art. Look at that fire. Look at that. I, li I think I like the language. It looks so cool. History and culture, art and design, digital citizenship, social emotional, equity and inclusion. We'll be going to to science. Let me just explore you. You have your monthly build challenges. Will you exchange your student creativity and strength? 21 century skills. There's a lot of world that you can explore here. Biomes and world. You have your biomes, feature worlds. And lastly, how to play. If you're still a beginner, you can start here or additional tutorials. But we're going to science. Don't worry, this, this is in heart. Trust me, you'll, you'll totally have fun with this. You have your element scavenger hunt and molecraft by Minecraft Education Edition. These two are from Minecraft Education Edition, and this one is by Joel Mills. But now, for now on, we'll go to element scavenger hunt. Element scavenger hunt. Difficult, difficulty is for beginner, and age is for a Plus. In the scavenger hunt world, use the material reducer to find as many materials as you can that contain oxygen. Did you know most common element on the Earth's surface is oxygen? In the scavenger hunt, use the material reducer to find as many materials as you can that contain oxygen. Find as many as you can. Choose another element and make your own scavenger hunt for a partner. You have your create world, lesson plan, share link, but all you have to do here is click create. You have your build challenges and chemistry. This one is not hard at all. It's loading. Look at that Minecraft there in the village, helping the village. I like this creeper right here. You can toggle auto jump or on or off in the settings menu under control. Game moving slowly, try turning down the render. Listen in a second. It will give you some advice while generating the game. Press I on your keyboard or touch the immersive reacher icon to read or translate. Looking for a specific biome? Try the library. Okay, here we are. It's kind of loaded. We're joining the world. Okay. Yay! Wait, did I cheese? Some sh right there. Here we are. So you are the show controls. Well, you is for forward and S is for back, A is for left. Left, D is for right, space is jump for you to see the inventory, code builder, immersive reader, and sneak. Let's read the instructions or us know what we're doing. Do you know that the most abandoned element in the universe is also the simplest hydrogen? What? That's so awesome! You're on the surface of Earth, the most common element. Is oxygen. It is in the air. We breathe the food. We eat the ground. Wait, what? I mean, we eat the ground we walk on. Elements make up the world around us. 
Find as many materials as you can that contain oxygen and use these to build for your scavenger hunt for. Found them all? Choose your own element and create your own. We have here tools. What we need. So we don't have to worry. Let's go get a, a diamond axe. Oh, look, that's shiny. Let's have a. We have here the material reduced. For example, we put a dirt and there's oxygen on it. We're going to put it on this and right here, you can put nitrogen, different, different elements, if you're going to have it. Okay, let's get some dirt. Let's see. Okay, here we are. A heap. This is how you do it. You just put a block and there's oxygen on it. Okay, let's put it back. You know, at least we know that now it has an oxygen. Falling. Put it right here. Okay. Let's try to fill up the board and see how many stuff, how many oxygen did we get. These are the elements. For example, you want the phosphorus. Pick up this question mark and put it there. You don't need to any more dirt. Let's press Q so the item. Let's try these. Get our diamond X. Diamond X is power. Diamonds. Let's try diamonds later. So, Bershog is also oxygen. Know that they're right. That kind of all of them is oxygen. Let's see. Okay, it's raining. Let's go into a cave. Okay, let's get our pickaxe. There's some more. Guys, don't. I wanted this. I mean. Hey. Stop raining. It's kind of too dark. Let's see. Let's do this. Let's see. Oh, me and I mean, wait, wait, wait. Let's clear. Let's just clear the weather so for us to see. Ta-da! Okay, let's see what the emerald ore has. It also has oxygen. Awesome. In Minecraft, you can learn stuff. Both of them has oxygen. That's great. Um, ooh, I see a sand right here. What's this? Like, what, what sand is this? Let's get some here. Okay, let's go get it. Oh, it already is in our inventory. I think this is clay. Hey, we already have clay. Okay, let's just check, check this and clay. They also have oxygen. See? In this game, all, all you have to do is find stuff that, that has oxygen. And if you're going to have a partner, Take up this question mark and put element you like. I hope you enjoyed Minecraft Education Edition, guys. For more videos, please check out my YouTube channel and you will see there more tutorials. I hope you like you I hope you will like Minecraft Education Edition guys.
All right. Okay. Thank you so much, right. Sophia okay. Celine, for, so uh, for that uh, wonderful uh, We thought that you already enjoyed uh, 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 Minecraft, doing your scavenger hunts, looking for uh, elements that comes with oxygen. It's a great demonstration showing how we enjoy science using Minecraft Education Edition. And I believe Miss Mayim Adiba have a question for you. Is that okay? Yes. yes. Good job. Yeah, good job, Sophia. I know yeah. that um, you have uh, been able to coach a lot of students during the first Philippine National Minecraft competition. And uh, congratulations for that. Now, my question is, being a Minecraft education ambassador, can you share with us your experience, how you were encouraged to take up STEM or STEAM, as we call it? I actually started learning about robotics and I find myself loving it with building and programming skills on it. When my mom introduced Minecraft Education Edition to me because she used it for her work since she's also a Minecraft trainer, I got really interested to it since I'm also a fan of Minecraft game. To be honest, I'm a bit of in programming. When I found out that there is also programming activity in Minecraft Education Edition, at first I got scared, but when I started it and after I saw my Minecraft agent doing the task all by itself through my codes, I realized that coding is not that bad and not that hard, and it's really fun, and it made me want to do more and more activity with it. And I thought that, why not share it with my Minecraft game buddies? I mean, my friends, cousin, my brother, and my sister, and even my mom's workmate childs. They really enjoyed learning coding with Minecraft. As well as I do enjoy sharing what I learn to them. And that's how I started teaching Minecraft Education Edition to the kids like me. All right. So, so you were encouraged to, to get into STEAM because you enjoy learning coding can you expound yes. on that yes Mama. yes and how old were you when you started coding and starting with minecraft education edition what how old were you when you started sophia how? i started playing minecraft when i was eight years old Okay, fantastic. Thank you, Sophia. Back to you, Annalyn. Thank you. Good job. Annalyn. All right. Okay, so thank you so much, uh, Sophia, for that uh, wonderful demonstration. As uh, Sophia mentioned, uh, there are tools like Minecraft Education Edition that we can use in order for us to encourage young girls, young kids out there to love more science, technology, engineering, and mathematics as you imagine she is only 10 years old and before she doesn't even uh, care in coding in science but with the help of minecraft education edition she able to explore and realize that mathematics science and coding is fun okay so a round of applause to sophia celine Avan. now for our uh, second uh, speaker you'll be encouraged as well for our second speaker is uh is a is a middle school student okay uh, our uh, second speaker is just a middle grade student and tech enthusiast as well as well as the founder of pixel pixies um and an annual uh she is also the one uh, who uh, conduct an annual workshop for kids who are interested in learning how to code uh someday she hopes to be a software engineer and uh, create inventions that can change the world while at the same time inspiring others, especially kids, to follow the same path. The same path, okay? Our uh, second speaker, a round of applause to Mona. Okay, hello, Mona. Hi, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> right, Mona, you can take it away. We're all excited. <laughs> Technology is everywhere. We can find it when we play video games, watch videos on YouTube, watch movies and TV shows on Netflix, use TikTok, listen to music, search things up online, and more. Today, 
You can find technology almost everywhere you look, even in something as simple as asking Amazon Alexa to turn on your lights. And if you can find it everywhere today, think about how advanced technology would be in the future. Think about the cool robots and spaceships you see in sci-fi books, and even some TV shows and anime. In fact, some of those may even exist today. One of the coolest and most advanced inventions is artificial intelligence, or basically when a computer is programmed to learn on its own. With that, hi everyone! My name is Alma Josa Vidasa. I'm a 7th grade student, and today I'm here to talk about coding, robotics, and artificial intelligence, as well as my exciting experiences in learning these topics. I started coding when I was in preschool. My mom gave me an app where I could use commands to move a dinosaur and complete missions. Soon, I wanted to learn more, so she then introduced me to Scratch, a simple programming language that allows users to create and share games online. One of my most memorable experiences was when my best friend and I joined a competition called the First Lego League Junior Philippines a couple of years ago. We made a Lego prototype of a robot that collects and purifies flood water for flood victims to drink, since water is hard to find during a flood when water lines get contaminated. My team and I won second place, making us eligible to go to the international competition in Japan a few months later. To prepare for this competition, we went all around NCR and even beyond that to interview several experts about natural disasters, water filters, amphibious vehicles, and more. It was really fun and exciting to learn from all these different people, but we also faced a lot of challenges along the way. There were some times when our robot just wouldn't work. Not to mention, we had to manage our time between working on our robot, rehearsing our presentation, and doing schoolwork. However, even when all these challenges came our way, we never gave up. We just kept on learning from our mistakes and moving forward. Everything went smoothly in Japan. And after an amazing trip to Legoland with the other teams, we learned that we won the Creative Programming Award. We were really happy and excited. Not only did we win the highest award in the competition, but we, we got to visit so many places, meet lots of new friends, and learn all sorts of different things. Around a year later, my teammates and I reunited when we got the DOSD Youth Excellence in Science Award. We were really excited to see each other again and to receive one of the biggest science awards in the Philippines, together with all the other students who won international math and science competitions. It also felt pretty great to know that even if there were a lot of challenges along the way, all the hard work we put into creating our robot paid off. Joining that competition, going to Japan, and receiving this award were all truly amazing experiences that I will never ever forget. Since then, I've attended more workshops, taught more girls how to code, and given speeches at local conferences, such as PyCon APAC 2019 and the FBU Tech Summit. I was also given scholarships to both the ID Tech Summer Camp in New York University and the Amazon Future Engineer Coding for Kids Online Summer Camp. I even got to tour the Google office in New York City, which was really cool. In 2019, I joined the Philippine Robotics Olympiad and the first LEGO League again. I had different teammates this time, but we still became really good friends. We came up with a drone that uses artificial intelligence and sensors to detect disasters like floods and fires and send information about their location to rescuers. After an earthquake, our drones could also be sent into buildings to use AI and sensors to search for different types of structural damage, like broken windows and doors, cracks, gas leaks, and water leaks. We got to interview a lot of different people like experts on drones and artificial intelligence. We played with each other a lot in our free time, and soon became close friends. My team and I won second place in the Philippine Robotics Olympiad, and best project and best presentation at the first LEGO League competition last school year. This year, Project SAR is one of the finalists in an international AI competition sponsored by Microsoft and Intel. All of these experiences are irreplaceable. Traveling the world, meeting friends who I still cherish today, and following my passion for technology. Sure, I encountered a lot of challenges along the way, but in the end, it was all worth it. All the bugs in our code, all the packed schedules, every single challenge we faced was worth it. Because now, I can look back at the wonderful memories I share with my robotics teammates and say without a doubt that I don't regret any single bit of it. The joy of winning is amazing, but it's the experience, the things I've learned, the things I've done, 
and the people I've met along the way that give my coding journey a special place in my heart. As you can see, programming robotics and artificial intelligence can be really fun. It always feels amazing to finally get a program to work. Plus, going to summer camp and joining competitions were both really exciting. And they let me explore the world and learn so many interesting things about coding and technology. And learning about technology can also help us change the world for the better. From complicated things like solar-powered flying cars, to simpler things like automatic fish feeding machines, technology can help us solve problems and make people's lives easier and more fun. And if we start learning how to code at a young age, if we start learning now, we can explore the world, meet new friends, learn new things, and someday make the world a better place for everyone to live in. With that, here are some ways you can learn more about coding, robotics, and AI. Personally, I started learning about robotics at the IK8 Cafe, which is now located in Fisher Mall, Quezon City. There, you can learn how to make cool robots out of Lego bricks, sensors, and motors. If you want to try making apps and games, you can start by learning Scratch, an online programming language with multiple resources and tutorials to guide you in creating simple programs. It also has extensions that allow you to program robots. Finally, if you're curious about artificial intelligence, you can go to the Machine Learning for Kids website. So over here is the website. You can sign up for a guest account if you, um, or you can sign up for an actual account. And if you're curious about learning artificial intelligence, you can go to worksheets over here. So this is all of the, these are tutorials for all the projects that you can do in the Machine Learning for Kids website. You can click this to choose a project type, so you can um, so you can program using text, images, numbers, sounds, or faces. You can also choose a difficulty from beginner projects, intermediate projects, and advanced projects. And you can choose a make type. So basically, this is the programming language that you can use. Next, I'm going to show you one of the projects that I made that I made recently. So this is chocolate or strawberry. It's basically an AI model that can differentiate between chocolates, strawberries, and chocolate strawberries. So this is the this is where you train the model. So you can upload pictures, and from all of these pictures in different categories, the computer can process them and learn how to differentiate between chocolate strawberries and chocolate strawberries. And then after that, you can train the model. It's just loading. You can train it by clicking Train New Machine Learning Model, which allows you to program it into an actual game. So for this example, we're going to use Scratch, and this is the program that I made. So you can start by you can start by clicking the green flag to start, and so this is the dialogue. Basically, she's wondering whether to eat chocolate or strawberries. So over here, you can go to Dot, you can click Switch Costume, and let's say that it's going to be chocolate. So you click it, and then after that. There's a ready button. And so the AI was able to determine that this is a chocolate. Now, if you want to try with strawberries, you can, you can click here and then click ready. And the machine learning model will also detect strawberries. The percentage over here is how confident the, the model is. So basically, right now it's 91% confidence and that this is a picture of a strawberry. You can also link Scratch to robotics by clicking over here to view all the extensions. So these are some things you can add to your project. You can add music, text, art, text-to-speech, face detection. And if you scroll down, there are also some options to pair with the Lego Mindstorms, Lego Boost, Lego We Do, and other, and other robotics things. And that's basically the Machine Learning for Kids website. If you want to learn more, feel free to connect with me. You can visit my website, sunshinemoneysoftware.tech, to learn more about my annual coding workshops. All of this might seem overwhelming at first, and it's true. Programming and robotics aren't easy. By learning more about technology, I encountered a lot of challenges and made a lot of mistakes. But no matter what path you take, there will be challenges along the way, and you will make a lot of mistakes. What matters is not how many mistakes you made, but what you learn from them. Life isn't about being perfect all the time. It's about growing and changing. It's about learning from the challenges you faced and the mistakes you made. And most of all, it's about never giving up. 
no matter how many times you fail, no matter how many difficulties you've encountered, never ever give up. Even though things like science, math, and programming may seem hard or complicated or overwhelming, that doesn't mean you can't learn them. So thank you for listening, everyone. Together, we truly can change the world with unity, teamwork, and of course, the power of technology. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Mona. We have yeah. Annelien. Hello. <laughs> so heartwarming <laughs> that you know, we have some really young girls who are really, uh, I would say, leading us and inspiring us to really uh, excel and to be resilient in STEM. And Mona, you are really, uh, you are a uh, inspiration. How old were you when you started the robotics, when you started with us in the robotics program? I was in grade three, so I was around eight or nine years old. Wow, and gosh, that's, <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Cool. Yes, and I know that you'll continue to be with us for many, many years, probably until you are a young woman <laughs> already. Yes, yeah. definitely. <laughs> Yes, okay. Annalyn, we have a question for yes. Mona. Um, actually, Mona, we are very much overwhelmed to all the achievement that you've showed with us. Congratulations. <laughs> and uh, we <laughs> congratulations. And in line with that, uh, with all your achievement, can you recommend activities, a uh, workshop or trainings that you think uh, young girls like you would learn uh, and enjoy? Well, like I said, some activities for you to learn how to code are the Machine Learning for Kids website. You can also start by learning Scratch. And you can connect with me through my website. I host an annual coding workshop called the Pixel Pixies, where we teach kids how to program on Scratch and Python. So, so I teach them how to make how to make simple games, how to program with AI, and the like. Wow. Right. Thank you. Okay, and yes, you have time to go to school. <laughs> <laughs> And you are preparing for first Lego League, right? The, the yes. team is running as well. Wow. Uh, congrats to the upcoming FLL competition. And Mona, I know that uh, most of the the younger uh, kid, the younger kids and mothers out here who are watching right now will be very interested to connect with you. Can you uh, can you share again your uh, your uh, contact information if they wanted to join your uh, free workshop also? We can post it here. Okay. Yes, okay. Um, my website is at .net. Um, So you can contact us. Uh, so there's a link there to contact me and you can send me an email from there. <laughs> all right. So for all the watchers out there, we'll be sharing um, Mona's contact information to our, our website. Okay. So uh, it's her uh, contact information. Sunshinebodysoftware.net. Oh, good yeah, luck. Thank, you. Really thank you so fun. much. Thank you, thank you so let's much, Mona. Yes. All right, you. before you go, let's have a group photo. Hey. Let's see. Okay. All right. Job in. All right. Okay. One. Job in. One, two, three. Okay, we're good. But before you go, we'll be, um, we'll be uh, giving you a certificate of appreciation for joining us at uh, this webinar. Hello. Okay. So congratulations and uh, thank you so much for for being with us this Saturday. So this is the certificate of appreciation presented to Almond Rose of Edosa for imparting valuable insight during encouraging girls in STEM Girl Power webinar given this sixth day of March 2021, signed by Miss Maylin Aviva, our president and CEO. Congratulations, Mona. Thank you. See you. So Good luck in the 10th first Lego League for your team. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Bye. Bye. Thank you. And of course, we'll be a giving certificate of appreciation as well with Sophia Celine. Sophia, can you join us again for a group photo? Sophia? All right. There's Sophia. Okay. Let's have a group photo with Mona as well and Annalyn. Okay. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, thank you, girls. Thank you so much for joining us. Enjoy the rest of the day. <laughs> All right, thank you for so, so inspiring us with your wonderful projects and your insights about girls in STEM. Okay.
Okay, let's move on. Annalyn, thank you. Thank you. All right, so... So what a wonderful uh, presentation from uh, Sophia and Mona, our youngers. Okay, uh, at this moment, we'll be um, sharing you our uh, third uh, speaker. It's a group of girls from Dr. Yangas College Incorporated uh, from Bulacan. If you're familiar with UICI, the number one school in Philippine Robotics uh, Academy and also the number one team in Philippine Robotics uh, Olympiad. Okay, these three girls um, got an award in World Robot Olympiad Canada for a senior category. Uh, they got the Good Award okay, with team members Naya Nicole Mendoza, Denise Carpio, and Abigail Silva. A round of applause for Team Novus of Dr. Yangas College. Hi, girls. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Uh, we're, we're doing, doing fine. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for joining uh, us today. Um, okay, we will be having Miss Maylene Abiba as well. All right. We have Naya, we have Denise, and we have Abby. All right. Can you um, show us your project that won a gold medal for the Philippines in the World Robot Olympiad Canada 2020? Go ahead. Take it away, ladies. So the project that we made for Novo 2020 was Project E. Uh, it stands for Footwear to Environmentally Empowering Technology. Uh, it aims to address three global pressing problems that we are currently facing in our world today. And first is the plastic pollution that causes climate change. Second is the lack of basic footwear of people around the world, and also the lack of electricity. And in order to do so, the process starts with choosing between the two buttons, which represent the type 1 and type 5 of the stick. After that, we will insert the plastic into the shredder at the top, and it will be automatically separated into the two molds over a melting device. And after a 30-minute uh, melting and a 30-minute cooldown, it will be automatically ejected by the robot. And after that, the footwear um, made from the metal plastic will be will infuse um, peso disc and battery. So as you will using this footwear, um, it will accumulate um, electricity that will be stored in the batteries that will serve as the power bank of this footwear. So um, you can use this um, footwear to charge your mobile mobile phones, tablets, and other gadgets. We will show you how. You can charge your mobile phone through the slipper. There. So, uh, through our project, we aim to address the mentioned problems early, and we will, we will also try to inspire other people to uh, use their talents in STEM and other aspects in life, which can benefit the world and help the less fortunate that uh, need this type of solution. Fantastic, ladies. That's really wonderful and you know that um i am part of the world robot olympiad uh, panel of judges but i didn't judge for you for your category but i heard a lot of good inputs and comments about how you presented and also knowing that you're an all girls team from the philippines so you really really made us proud now let's move on to our question and answer because you are an inspiration to a lot of young girls who are viewing us and who will be viewing us in the replay videos my first question, and I'd like um, all of you to answer, Naya, Abby, and Denise to answer, is that how are you encouraged to get into STEM? Are you, um, uh, give us give us a, a brief background, how you became also part of the team of the Dr. Yamas College's uh, robotics team, DY, DYCI oh. Nobis. Okay, who wants to start? Oh, I okay, Denise, um, go ahead. 
uh, I am in the STEM strand. Abby is in ABM, and I also in UMS. But uh, that doesn't limit us to only excel in those fields because we are all interested and we are all eager to help through mm -hmm. uh, robotics, which include the uh, the courses that are incorporated in STEM. So as as a child, I was uh, always interested in uh, gadgets, in science. I was always inclined to the subjects of science. So I uh, pursued that uh, subject and I decided to go to STEM. And then I enrolled to DOCI in high school and started uh, auditioning for the robotics team. When I was 11 years old. So since grade 7, I've been a part of the DOCI robotics team, and it was really a very meaningful experience for me. Uh, thank you, Denise. Okay, Abby, you want to be next? So, Abby? Uh, even though I am uh, in line with uh, business, uh, I am still interested in uh, computers and other technologies. So that's why uh, I became part of this team. Um, I started becoming a robotics member when I am in grade 10. Um, I am 15 years old at that time. So because of my interest in uh, technology and other STEM related, yeah, uh, I, uh, um, okay. I, I, I joined uh, the DYC robotics team. Uh, we, we have uh, robotics classes since grade 7, so I have um, a background um, about robotics. Um, even though it's basic, uh, it, I learned it from the coaches and other members. Oh, fantastic. Very good. Thank you, Abby. Okay, so you started grade 7. Denise started what grade again, Denise? Grade 7. Grade 7 as well. All right. Naya, share us your experience, your story. Um, when I was a child, uh, I was really into Lego. Uh, I was always playing with my cousins with Lego. And when I learned that Lego Robotics is in UICI, uh, it, that, when I learned that Lego Robotics is being taught in UICI, my interest uh, started to have a spark. And when I transferred here in UICI, uh, I didn't actually plan on getting into robotics. I was just amazed that there is robotics in the school that I am in. And then when I was in grade 9, I was given the opportunity to join UAC Air Robotics. And from then on, uh, we trained and we talked with other members. And that's where it all started. Uh, I didn't actually uh, plan on pursuing robotics this way because, uh, this much because I uh, at first, I wasn't actually inclined in the STEM field, but then when I entered robotics, I discovered that there are a lot of things that I can do. There are a lot of uh, problems that I can solve with my team members and with the school uh, that we can help uh, the world to solve problems just like Project Week here. And that's where it all started. Fantastic. Okay, my next question will be, do you feel that you have the same opportunities as the boys there from DYCI? Um, in our own experience, we don't actually feel that there is a boundary between being a woman and a male in uh, our society or in our school. Because uh, here in the UICI, we are given equal opportunities. Uh, our genders are not, uh, yeah. not become a basis for us to be able to learn in their body. But Great. we are aware that um, some are experiencing those limited people would like to inspire them more and inspire others also to try and include us because we can do just as just as much as they can. And also we believe that it's all about um, the willingness. So um, even though other people will um you mentioned can do anything that a man can. Um, I think that, or we, I believe that uh, it is not, uh, women are not capable to do uh, anything that we want to do. Great, great. 
All right, now you are all in, uh, is that 11th grade? Am I correct? Or 12th grade? 12th grade? 12th grade 12th. All right, so that means you are now looking into college courses. So can I ask each of you, what are your choice for college uh, courses for next year? So for me, I am trying to pursue uh, in the field of medicine. Since All I was right. a, I always wanted to become a doctor and try to help those who are in need, especially of medical treatment. So mm -hmm. that's where I'm uh, leaning on. Um, I am Great. trying to get into university in Manila. Wow, we need, yes, we need more doctors, especially with what is happening now in the situation in not just in the Philippines, but in the world. Okay, Abby, what is your choice of uh, course to pursue after grade 12? So for me, since I am in EBM strand, I want to pursue a marketing management course. But mm -hmm. um, since, if, even though I am pursuing business, um, I will not stop um, my learning in technology. Very good, yes, because marketing can be used anywhere, either, uh, just, uh, either, either, especially in technology as well. Okay, Naya, what's your choice of course? Uh, in the future, in college, I would want to pursue broadcasting. Uh, I would mm -hmm. want the uh, communication skills that I've learned through robotics. And also, through that career, I would want to be an advocate for students. Uh, through that work, uh, through that field, I would want to share to other people about the good things that we can achieve together in the Fantastic. All right. So that means that's why there is an A in our STEAM, no? It's science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. So we're not really just entailed in the in the technology or the science field, but we do have an arts field which can also use technology and science. Now my last question for you is that how are you, um, how is your life changed after winning a gold medal in the World Robot Olympiad, Canada 2020? Um, uh, recently, there are certain interviews that we had because of the so scholarships. Award. Any offers for scholarships? None so far. <laughs> well, we will present, yes. <laughs> you send me your, your, your bata, I will. I will uh, send you an um, application for scholarship because the Science Education Institute, our partner, the Science Education Institute, Department of Science and Technology, they do offer scholarships, particularly from the for the Philippine robotics teams who are excelling, who have excelled. So just to let you know. So what, what about you, Abby and uh, Denise? How has your life ha has changed after winning the gold? in uh, WRO Canada 2020. You have more friends. I know you, I, I saw your your post. There were posters all over the school campus. <laughs> You're rock stars now, huh? <laughs> You're now very popular, more popular. Okay, tell us all, how has your, your life changed after winning the gold medal? Since we've been in the robotics team for many years, um, we dinaman po sa sa naipo sa champion since this is our first time winning Abi and B. This is our first time winning in gold in WRO. So it was a very very thrilling experience. But uh, not much has changed. But um, as I mentioned, there were interviews. Our, 
our efforts and the way um we want to solve problem global problem and we appreciate him of now we really think that our invention will help the society and also take a note that i am working on how to scale and with the joint ventures with all the inventions that we have been able to create all throughout these years in the philippine robotics olympiad so take a take note that uh, we may need your assistance even if probably you're already in college that hopefully we'll be able to make a commercial version of your create of your inventions and uh, have a joint venture capitalist join us so that we can help the world right with project feet hey uh, any last words any anything you'd like to share to all the girls and young women viewing us today and even the parents the school administrators the educators denise can you start so um to remind you what we said um do not do not be hindered by the limitations set by the society towards the women against uh, against the efforts that they produce uh, just because of their gender. And as Abby said, it is about the willingness to help, the willingness to solve the global problems that are uh, that are challenging, challenging us today, especially in this. Uh, in this pressing time of the pandemic. So not just to the students, also to the educators, to uh, the other people that are aware of these issues. Do not be uh, limited. Do not let yourself be limited. And just try to pursue what you want for the benefit of others. Fantastic. OK, Abby, any, any words you want to share to our viewers? To so our viewers, um, if you have uh, dreams that you want to pursue, never give up. Um, continue learning because even though uh, you think that you can do this thing or that, um, learning is still um, a big help to um, pursue your dreams so that it might help you in the future or it might help our society. Thank you. Okay, Naya. Uh, and just to what we said, uh, everyone around the world, and girls especially, uh, uh, there are a lot of ways that you can discover more about STEM and you can help the world more through uh, ways that we did not even imagine before. Because STEM is everywhere, and you can help everyone, each other, through STEM. So, as girls, we should join hands together and let us build STEM more for the benefit of Fantastic. Really, truly great power. Okay, let's have a, a group photo. Okay. Annalyn, all right. All right. Okay, we're good. Okay, thank you very much, Naya, Abby, and Denise from Dr. Yangas College's Team DYCI Novos. See you soon. And we also will be uh, will be uh, giving you a certificate of appreciation. Okay, so we are very thankful for for everyone for giving us your Saturday. We know that all of you are too busy with your school schedule, but thank you for joining us at this uh, webinar. Uh, in line with that, we'll be giving you a certificate of appreciation. Uh, presented to DYCI Novus team for imparting valuable insight during the Encouraging Girls in STEM Girl Power webinar given the 6th day of March 2021 uh, with team member Naya Nicole Mendoza, Denise Carpio, Abigail Silva, signed by Ms. Maylene Aviva, our president and CEO. Thank you so much and congratulations. Thank you, Thank you ladies. Thank you and God bless. Stay safe. Okay, take it away, Annalyn. All right. So, uh, as you can see, ma'am, uh, all the all the talk that they've shared with us are very inspiring. We started from Sophia, which is only a uh, grade five student, then Mona, a middle school student, a senior high school student girl, and now our next speaker is a Philippine Robotics Academy alumni. Okay, 
Uh, she, is, she is a third year BS Computer Science student of St. Michael College of Laguna, SMCL. And throughout her stay in St. Michael College of Laguna High School, she serves as an officer for the Robotics Club, and she is now the acting as a mentor for the younger Robotics uh, Club members. And apart from her leadership uh, experiences in SMCL, she has also been actively involved in her own community, where she also serves as the first ever Binyan Junior City Mayor. So she is from Laguna. Her passion and dedication as a young leader allowed her to grow and explore beyond her comfort zone. She is now part of Ayala Young Leaders Alliance and Asia Pacific Youth Exchange. And she is also a staunch advocate of women in STEM. And she is strong, strongly committed to prove that science is a place for women and girls. Jasmine believes that empowering young people is a giant leap toward achieving a better future, being young at heart, inspiring her fellow youth, especially her fellow girls, uh, comes naturally to her. She believes that the world gets better each time a person learns from experiences and continues to pay it forward. A round of applause for our fourth speaker, Jasmine Tan of SMCL Ligna. Good day, everyone, and happy Women's Month. I would like to thank Delta Multimedia for inviting me to speak about a topic which I'm very much interested in, encouraging women and girls in STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. Growing up as a kid, I have always been a curious girl who tends to ask questions like, why is the sky blue? How do robots work? In those times, when I started to wonder, my passion for science started to grow. Since then, I've always been fascinated about STEM, about the amazing things that science can do. So when I finally stepped into high school, I started to explore in STEM or STEAM fields even more, just to give a brief background of my love for science and how fun and exciting my experiences in STEM have been. I was in grade 7 when I found out that there's this club in our school called Robotics. It was quite a funny moment because back then I wasn't really aware of robotics education. The first thing that came to my mind was the robotics as in the robotic type of dance that I often see on TV. But then I was asked by my teacher to join the club since she's very much aware that I am into science and technology. I'm just so glad that I did because joining the robotics club is one of the best decisions that I've ever made. I spent many years in the club from my junior high school years up to senior high school. Being a robotics club has made me even more passionate to pursue a career in STEM despite the existing notions and beliefs that STEM fields are mostly dominated by boys. As a matter of fact, as a kid, I remember watching TV shows about science, and it's really the men and boys who represent the STEM field. When talking about astronauts, scientists, engineers, programmers, it's mostly the picture of men that first comes to the minds of people. I could even recall the times when my classmates in grade school used to laugh at me for saying that my ambition is to become a scientist, an astronaut. People say that I dream to be, that I am ambitious, that I am living in an illusion, but I don't mind. I love science and it's really what I love to do. So I will pursue my passion, even if it means being the only girl in the team. I love challenging myself and exploring things. And along those years of doing that, of course I had to go out of my comfort zone and be surrounded by different people. For several times, I was put in a situation where I was the only girl in the team. It was actually an empowering moment for me in the sense that I was able to show people that women and girls can also excel in things that are mostly expected from boys. These pictures were taken back in senior high school when all the other girl members of our robotics club were still in junior high school and that was the only one in senior high. It's actually great that in robotics club, girls who are passionate in STEM can find the sense of belongingness, a space where they can be whoever they aspire to be, may it be an astronaut or a scientist. In robotics, everyone, boys and girls, 
can dream big with limitless possibilities. I am currently in college now, studying at St. Michael's College of Laguna. I'm taking up Bachelor of Science in Computer Science. I don't compete in robotics competitions anymore, but I found a greater purpose, which is mentoring younger robotics club members. It's really rewarding and I'm so happy to see that more and more girls are starting to join our club. We even had an all-girls team who competed. Being a girl in STEM can really be so fun and exciting. Challenging the norms and stereotypes is even more exciting. We at Angelic Gears Robotics Club, we believe that science is fun, science is awesome, and most importantly, science is a place for girls. For all the girls out there who share the same passion as ours, don't be afraid to step up. Pursue your passion and don't be afraid to excel in STEM simply because it is perceived to be a field for boys. We, girls in STEM, exist. We are also capable of doing cool science experiments. We can also build robots. And of course, we can also pull off those white laboratory codes. Now, if we think of it, where do we girls really stand in the fields of science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics? How far have we come? This morning, I'd like to focus on these following points. I'll be talking mainly about STEAM as an educational approach. How much percent do girls occupy in the world of science? What is it like to be a girl pursuing a career in STEAM? And of course, all the amazing women who made significant science breakthroughs. By definition, the main difference between STEM and STEAM is that STEM explicitly focuses on scientific concepts. STEAM, on the other hand, investigates the same concepts but with the influence of arts. And that includes the inquiry and problem-based learning methods being used in the creative process. This STEAM concept is not really new to us since back in the day of our great philosophers, they were able to make discoveries by combining science and art. Now, if we're going to look at it in a modern day setting, it's like a group of inventors trying to work collaboratively to develop a gadget. Of course, in the process, they will not only focus on the technical specifications, but also its interface. How is it going to look like? Its size, materials, colors, and things like that. That is where art comes in. Creativity coupled with innovation can do much more amazing things. With STEAM, it has been found that vital skills among students can also be developed. Other than the core knowledge and skills acquired through STEM education, the integration of arts increases creativity and improves happiness and well-being in the process. In a more general perspective, it enhances problem-solving skills influenced by, of course, creativity and innovation. So instead of working persistently, to let the students understand mathematical concepts and facts from the books, we must also focus on nurturing creativity through arts. However, in the global scale reality, despite the remarkable progress of women and girls in STEAM, gender gaps still persist. This is the actual reality that challenges us girls even more. And now we ask why? Some of the reasons for such gender gap include the fact that as women choosing STEM in college becomes a positive trend today, the number of men choosing degrees in STEM is rapidly increasing too, and it is rising so much faster than the number of women. Therefore, the gender gap in STEM does not only remain constant in percentage, but is even growing over the years. If we look at a much specific figure, there are only about 35 female students taking up STEM over 100. These data are based on the Higher Education Statistics Agency and UCAS in the United Kingdom. But these figures pretty much apply in general on the representation of women in STEM. As for the number of graduates, there is, of course, a large gender gap over the years. But still, this shows that the efforts to encourage women to enter into STEM fields has been somewhat successful since there has been a 1% increase by the year 2019. To further analyze the data, here's the subject breakdown of the female graduates. It didn't even reach half percentage of compared to men. Disturbingly, 
in areas of engineering, tech, and computer science, it did not even reach 20%. As for the STEM workforce, women represent less than 30%. The sad reality is that women and girls are defined by so many stereotypes and misconceptions. Here are some of the most common stereotypes that we often deal with. The idea that girls are bad at math. Because mathematics is a gateway subject for science, this myth has broad ramifications, including the belief that women do not succeed in STEM due to the innate differences in ability. But the truth is there is no innate gender difference in mathematics ability. However, different societal expectations for male and female students in many countries result in varied experiences of learning, levels of confidence, and of course, performance. Another is that success in STEM fields tends to be described with stereotypically masculine characteristics, like, for example, autonomy, rational thought, and logic. As for the feminine traits like social skills and caring for others, these are believed to be incompatible with STEM. And so girls and women internalize these stereotypes. When they associate STEM with masculine instead of feminine characteristics, they do not see STEM interests and activities as matching part of their female identity. A sense of belonging influences women's interests persistence, and of course, success in STEM fields. Managing work and family can be more challenging for women than it is for men. Women are expected to take primary responsibility for home and preparing roles for parenting, in addition to being a scientist, while men are encouraged to devote themselves to their science and to expect that their home will be taken care of by women. But then, despite the fact that many women feel guilty about working while having a family, recent studies show that children of working mothers are more successful, caring, and concerned about gender equality. They are also more likely to personally challenge gender stereotypes. So women can manage as a scientist and as a mother. Another is the idea that the battle against sexism in science has been won, emerges regularly. But the truth of the matter is, we still have a long way to go. The issue on women being in STEM is still a discord in many industries. There are strong systemic discouragement to women in scientific research, including the lack of career prospects. Unconscious bias also hinders women's employment in STEM. All these have a deep societal, cultural, and institutional roots, and no single strategy can entirely plug the leak. Spreading the fact is a start, but ultimately, it requires a multifaceted approach across all levels of education and workforce. As a staunch advocate for women in STEM, I encourage all girls out there to debunk the myth that does not perpetuate false beliefs with simple fact that women are less visible in STEM field. We're going to spark change. We, girls in STEM, exist. We have to think differently and not be conceived by the pre-established norms in science. STEM is also for girls. We have to let young girls to dream big. Girls are so much more than just a princess. Just as how Legos are branded as toys for boys and that girls can play it as much as boys do. But you know, we're living in a different time now. Girls can be whoever they want. Girls can aspire to be engineers and scientists. We have reached this point in time where girls can play Legos for as long as they want. If you haven't heard of Eliza Carson, she was selected as one of the Mars ambassador, becoming one of the seven people representing the mission to establish a human colony on Mars by year 2030. She attended Space Camp seven times and was the first to attend all three NASA space camps around the world. At just 19 years old, Eliza's list of accomplishments also include being able to graduate 
in Advanced Space Academy and multiple salary ride camps. With all these, she has been officially certified to go to space and be an astronaut trainee. Isn't it amazing and inspiring at the same time? In addition to that, here we have Katie Bowman, the girl who got us to the black hole. Tons of data right there. We can see how far women have paved the way for amazing discoveries in science. Even long before back in 1969, Margaret Hamilton was also responsible for the code that got us to the moon. These are just some of the many women and girls who have showed us that we can really excel in STEM. This only proves that girls never stop. We continue to make history and create breakthroughs. Who knows, maybe years from now, one of us will be making amazing discoveries and inventions too. We, as women and girls, we have a lot to contribute. We are awesome. And here are some of the great women in science whom we look up to. Thank you to all women who paved our way to science. They have made significant discoveries that changed STEM forever and improved our way of life. Seeing all these women and girls in the history of science, I personally often wonder how long will it take for us to have a time when we wouldn't have to single out or highlight the presence of women in STEM because it's already part of the norm. Because women are already seen as capable as men. Because we are given equal opportunities in science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. How long will it take for us to have the society understand that our existence as women is not a mere quest to prove ourselves worthy of recognition? It's really a long way to go, but it is not a hopeless vision. Now is the time that we empower young girls to pursue careers in STEM. I believe that it is a giant leap towards a better future. We as women and girls can be leaders, innovators, trailblazers, influencers, and change makers, and that's something that we all benefit from. The experience of being a girl in the world today is changing, and so are beliefs, convictions, and perceptions. We must strongly be committed to prove that science is a place for women and girls until it becomes part of the norm. The work towards a more equal future for girls everywhere continues. We must invest in the future of the girls. Let us level the playing field in science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. Always keep in mind that we are awesome. We got the girl power, and we are so much more than what the society dictates us to be. That will be all. Thank you. All right, so what a very oh, inspiring uh, presentation from Jasmine. Tan. Jasmine, yes. Jasmine, you are so inspiring. Hello, yes. Oh. Jasmine, oh, oh. You, you, you can be a United Nations ambassador <laughs> for science and technology. I, I really am so happy with uh, all the endeavors and the initiatives and also the giving us the demographics and the, the cheering on to all the women, especially on gender myths that you presented. Congratulations. Now, let's ask a few questions to Jasmine that mm -hmm. uh, so that we can inspire more girls. You know, she gave us a rah, rah, rah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my first question would be, you know, that uh, okay, the space education program has already been approved in the House of Representatives. And my question is, would you be planning or do you think you can uh, apply for uh, being uh, the first woman in space to be <laughs> sent by the Philippines? <laughs> what do you think uh, about would, that? Yes. that? I would love to think of that. Ever since I was a little girl, I am so amazed by space and astronomy in general. However, I'm not really quite sure if my qualifications are enough for me to be qualified for that. But it will be great if I can enter the procedure. Yeah, we'll put your name on it, on the, on the application, because Program. yes, we are working very closely with the Department of uh, Science and Technology for the uh, Advanced Science, ASTI, uh, Science and Technology Institute. So uh, they have just sent a uh, satellite to space. I to, I'm sure you've heard of that, the Diwata. I believe it already came back to the Philippines with all the data that's um, 
been accumulated. So uh, they are also looking for for scientists, astronomers, and I will put your name in the list. Thank yeah, Jasmine. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, Annalyn, you have a question for Jasmine. Um, we're very inspired with your presentation, giving us data as well, and encouraging girls uh, on STEAM. Now, uh, any encouraging words for youngers out there who is watching our webinar right now? Well, all I can say for all the young girls out there is to dream big. Do not be afraid of the preconceived notions and beliefs. We can be whoever we want. I, I want to ask a question. Have you ever experienced being... Uh, uh, how can I, I, will, I wouldn't say discriminated by by not feeling very confident in the midst of all the other boys that uh, you're in company with. Because I did, you know, I I uh, set well, I established the Philippine Robotics Olympiad in 1999, but we started the competitions in the year 2000, and a lot of the male engineers didn't really think uh, of me seriously. And I had to really prove that this Philippine Robotics Olympiad is really our way to encourage boys and girls like yourselves, you know, to, to take up a, a STEM course in college. So here we are, 20 years after. <laughs> so what do you have any uh, experience that uh, you, you felt differently or you had to, to really put up a, a fight, <laughs> not say a fight, uh, to, to prove yourself? Jasmine? Right, I think she has. I, yes, ma'am, I think Jasmine is having a bandwidth uh, issue at the moment. Right, I think she has frozen, but, but we can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. Right. Yes, go ahead, Jasmine. And then what can you advise to the other girls who would like to. Um, you know. Yeah, I'm sorry, yes. but I'm having connection problems, so now I'm back. So, to address the question, Paul, uh, actually, at first, I was hesitant to join the robotics club because I wasn't really aware of it. But then, yeah, I found out that also most members are guys and only few are girls. So, but then I have this kind of thinking in me. I have established over a long period of time just for my experiences i have this in me that i want i always want to challenge myself and make a difference and also for quite a long time i have been surrounded by so many empowered women and so i think that i'm i love science and i'm passionate about robots so why not pursue a career where i can bring my advocacy with me as well as my passion and that's how I got myself into robotics, and that got me to stay for several years. And until now, I strongly commit to prove that STEM is a place for girls until such a time that the society sees it as a norm and not just a mere achievement. This is already normal to have girls in science. That's why I'm still pursuing a career in STEM. I hope that I'm being able to inspire some girls out there to also work for It is. <laughs> and it's good that you find time to mentor the younger students of St. Michael College of Laguna. And really, really appreciate that because I think uh, for all our viewers, specifically all the young women who are listening and viewing us, is that let's let's give back. No, We were given the opportunity yeah. to excel and to now be inspired and to venture into the STEM program. Let's give back and uh, then mentor other girls because I think that's the only way for us to 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 propagate <laughs> the program. Mm -hmm. Is if we have a, a, an ate ate and with our yeah. little diva. Uh, yes. Because if yeah, we don't, have, as I mentioned in my opening talk, we need to have mentors like you, Jasmine. We have Naya, while ago Naya, Denise, and Abby. And of course, even young Mona and Sophia, who, who even at their young age are willing to extend their help and assistance to other girls who are interested, right? Yep. I think it's awesome to have like 
atom figures in the world of STEM to further encourage them. And I also believe in the power of paying it forward. For us to empower more girls, we need to uplift each other and also pay it forward. All the experiences that we have can yes. somehow help them to dream big of themselves. Fantastic. Very well said. Pay, uh, pay it forward. Exactly. Because uh, that's the way for us to progress as a country. It's really to give back, pay, pay forward and give back because we were given much during our during our time in the robotics uh, program. And uh, even if you're in college, we know that you will go back and continue to help your other your other little little sisters, yeah. right? <laughs> even little brothers. <laughs> yeah, it will always be my home, robotics. <laughs> that's you know that's so heartwarming to. Yep. To um to hear, and um, as I said, you know, twenty years down the road after we have established the Philippine Robotics uh, program in the Philippines, is that we have or I I have already seen a lot of uh, that from children to adulthood, and now yeah. they have families of their own. <laughs> and I'm glad that they have chosen career. You know the. The tech, uh, tech startups, some of them have put up tech, tech startups, incubators. In fact, this week I'm meeting one or two of them. Uh, they are into technology startups, especially with the, the situation, the COVID uh, pandemic. I believe that we have the young women and young girls like you yeah. will be really uh, going to be contrib contributing in the recovery and the way for us That's to thrive. Thing. For the yeah, to thrive through technology, science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. Yep. Okay. So, Jasmine, any final? Yes, Jasmine. Sorry, I, I also believe that in this time of pandemic, women and girls have also a lot to contribute, and that's not over. Yes. <laughs> that's true. Definitely. That's true. Okay. Any any other uh, final words you'd like to share to our viewers? Um. To end, I will like to give emphasis that women and girls we are so much more than what the society expects us to be so might as well we keep on surprising the society of how great yeah. are. Yes. fantastic thank you so yeah. much jasmine and let's have our group photo all right we're good one more time one two All right, there you go. We're good. Yes. So, on behalf of Pelta Multimedia, uh, we are very much a grateful, Jasmine Tan, for giving us your time this Saturday. We knew that you are a very busy person, young leader. <laughs> That's why we really line up your name for this uh, webinar because uh, we, we've been working together at I Create Cafe Manila. I show your passion and I know how you will make an impact to young listeners uh, right now. So in line with that, uh, Pelta Multimedia will be giving you a certificate of appreciation. Okay, so this is presented to you, our beloved Jasmine Chan, for imparting your valuable insight during the Encouraging Girls in STEM Girl Power webinar. Okay, given this 6th day of March 2021, signed by our president, Ms. Mayheen Abdi. Congratulations! And by the way, Jasmine, uh, as a final note, is that uh, we, we can nominate you as uh, one of the 10 outstanding students of the Philippines. Because you're in the... Yes. Oh, yes. Just send me your CV and then uh, Delta Multimedia will nominate you. Because Hi. that, uh, yes. We, we need more women as, aspiring like you to, to be part of the 10 outstanding students of the Philippines. So please send oh. me your, your CV. <laughs> Thank you so much for Miss Mayne. Conferred by the President of the Philippines. All right. Okay, with this, thank you so much, Annalyn. Take it away. Thank you, Jasmine. Okay, All right. Away. Okay. So uh, thank you so much, Miss Mayne Aviva, our President and CEO, for uh, joining this uh, webinar, uh, celebrating uh, National Women's Month. So uh, congratulations to all the ladies out there. Uh, we hope that this webinar uh, helped you I realize that we can uh, we can uh, enjoy science, technology, engineering, even arts and mathematics in a very fun way. Our speakers give you uh, give you 
some tools that they are using, give you some insight on how they get into STEAM. So I hope this uh, webinar will, will encourage our young girls out there that you can also uh, excel in STEM. Okay, so for uh, more information about all the program that we've showed with you, you can contact us at Felta Multimedia Incorporation, uh, gmail.com. And you can also send us a direct message through our Felta Facebook page. Uh, in line with that, I would like to congratulate uh, everyone and thank you so much for joining us this Saturday. A uh, happy Women's Month to all the women out there and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you and mabuhay. Thank you.